Hello, my name is Myreen Belisi, and I am a co-author on this paper. Um, the lead authors are Dr. Helen Tong at the IVPP. Um, that's the um, Institute of Vermic Paleontology and Paleoanthropology in Beijing, um, and Dr. Xiaoming Wang, who is here at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County, um, curator of vertebrate paleontology. And I am a postdoctoral research fellow um, in Los Angeles at the La Brea Tarpets and Museum, which is also part of the Natural History Museum. So the paper is titled Hypercarnivorous Teeth and Healed Injuries to Canis chiliensis, which is a, an ancestor of um, the gray wolf or an early relative of the gray wolf from early Pleistocene Huan beds in China. And um, so basically this, this early dog or this um, early wolf relative um, is, uh, has hypercarnivorous teeth, which are teeth that are adapted for slicing meat um, and also crushing bone. And um, so Canis chiliensis uh, was found with um, these, not only having these teeth, but also um, specimens were found with these healed injuries. So, um, for example, we have, um, we have jaws uh, that clearly show that this animal was crushing bone. Um, and we also have a shin bone from this animal that shows that, um, well, it was fractured and healed. And in the fossil record, when we see evidence of healing, we interpret that as, oh, the animal lived continued to live after it was critically injured. And so um, the logic from there is that, well, if this was an active predator that needed to hunt in order to survive, in order to feed itself, and this injury was incapacitating enough that it probably could not hunt for a little bit, or actually for a significant amount of time, then it must have been getting by with some help from um, from its friends or family or what we call um, social hunting. So um, here at Rancho La Brea or the La Brea Tarpets, we have, um, so we are an active fossil deposit. Um, by active, I mean it is actively entrapping to this day and also actively being excavated. And um, La Brea min means tar in Spanish. And um, so that describes the depositional <laughs> environment that we have. We are, um, we, we have asphalt seeps here, places where um, asphalt uh, seeps up out of the ground and pools on the surface. And over, over the last 50,000 years or so, that has entrapped um, thousands and thousands of animals of all different sorts, including um, mammoths and mastodons, for example, and predators like saber-toothed cats and dire wolves. And so um, my Zoom background right now um, is uh, features a wall at our institution. So this is a, a display wall of 400 dire wolf skulls and they are all real and, um, and they're all on exhibit and that's only a fraction of the dire wolf um, skulls that we have. And so we have thousands of these, but every single one, of course, is important because um, as you can see, hopefully in, um, in my background, all of them are different in some way and all of them come from different points in time. And so each one tells a slightly different story about how it used to live and how the environment was. So at La Brea, we have enough specimens that we are able to study things here that are not easily studied elsewhere. And that includes phenomena like pathologies that are injuries that are preserved um, on the bone. And so we have a good record of um, pathologies, for example, from the dire wolf. Um, and in a previous paper, um, colleagues and I found that the dire wolf was, um, it wasn't getting hurt a lot right? Like it's still only a minority of dire wolves that um, have uh, signs of injury, but when they were getting hurt, they tended to be injured um, in the legs and in the feet. And so this 
uh, suggested to us that, um, or this, this confirmed for us rather, what uh, previous hypotheses about how there will hunt. Um, so there's often a contrast between the saber-toothed cat and the dire wolf, the saber-toothed being an ambush predator or being inferred to be an ambush predator and the dire wolf being inferred to be a pursuit um, predator. And so, um, yeah, the dire wolf was getting hurt a lot. In, um, uh, we, we saw a lot of fractures in, um, in the shin bones that uh, are similar to the fractures found in um, Canis chiliensis that we um, that we show, that, that we describe in this paper. And in addition to the limb fractures, we also um, saw a lot of fractures um, and uh, signs of infection in the lower jaw of the dire wolf that also we interpreted to be um, uh, from bone cracking because they happen to be in the part of the jaw that um, that suffer the maximum impacts from bone cracking. So again, similar to, to this Chinese wolf. And so that was really cool to us that we could, you know, the fossil record um, shows these similar patterns in two different species, closely related, but from different points in time, like a difference of, you know, a million years, right? Different points in time, but then um, also different continents but just shared ancestry and um, shared behavior.